I don't see anywhere in the Declaration of Independence that politicians have a right to force me to pay for my neighbor's lifestyle. Not their housing, their food, their childcare, their habits, nor their sex life. It's just not in the Constitution. That a politician has the right to force religious institutions and religious individuals to subsidize activities, behaviors, of, or life choices that they consider abhorrent and a violation of the tenets of their faith. We have over 100 major companies and, and religious organizations in court right now spending their money to fight off Obamacare and this HHS mandate. Major corporations. You have Hobby Lobby being fined a million dollars a day while they're in court fighting off this mandate. This battle against Obamacare and HHS mandate for sex subsidies is one that we must fight. And see, our party wants to be quiet on these things. Well, they're showcasing their ideas now in your face. It's worse than the bully who just keeps at you, keeps at you, keeps at you. At what point are we going to stand up and be the party of Abraham Lincoln, a party of Ronald Reagan that said, no, you cannot, as many of the founders knew, have a free country if you're not a moral country, a moral people. If you're not a moral people, you can't be a moral people without being a religious people. And they, you know, we know, and it has to be fought by anyone even if they're not a religious person who believes that there are boundaries in our Constitution that politicians can't cross. Boundaries that were set there so we could stay free. Boundaries that they themselves had to debate for 80 years over slavery because they knew that freedom and the ideals of individual liberty that they declared were inconsistent with the very law of the land and conflicted with their law of that same land that they established. We are no longer free when a politician can force Americans to subsidize what their faith deems vile and destructive. And for Republicans that think, well, they should have come to the polls anyway, no, maybe the listening tour should be with the religious right instead of the liberals and find out what happened to our base. What is it? You know, it's kind of like in a marriage that finally the woman, I'm leaving. Why? I thought we had a good, no, I've been trying to tell you for the last 30 years and you wouldn't listen. And now we're in divorce court. And now we're in divorce court and we're fighting over the house. And the kids are wondering, what is going on? We thought y'all were happy. We're no longer a nation of individual obligation. When politicians can pit family against family, friend against friend, neighbor against neighbor, employer against employee, young against old, just for these left-wing social experiments that have failed throughout history. And we don't want to talk about it. So the first question that conservatives should be asking is not how to elect Republicans. The first question we should be asking is what is wrong with our nation? And how do we fix it? And what's wrong is we're no longer putting it up according to the blueprints. Our nation was designed to be free under God, and we've lost our way. And every part of our country that's untouched by government is going great. Look at this iPad. If only I didn't put in what time I'm supposed to finish and so I don't have a, um, the little thing to ring to me. I mean, where American innovation and productivity is, people are doing great. We're doing fine. Some states, their unemployment rate is like 3%. Now, our problem is where we've let government take over our lives. And the federal government now takes 25% of our American economy to pay for all of this social engineering because people need direction for their lives. And responsibility comes with a limited government. And when people say, no, these are the rules, and no one gets to cross them. And out of control debt, enslavement to government, and broken families is no formula for a great country. But the good news is we can change. But where there are serious challenges, we need serious work to be done. And getting our message of freedom into our hard hit communities should be the top priority for conservatives. This country is becoming less and less white, as most of you know. And while liberalism is the only message that has been sold in these communities for the last 50 years, we have a lot of work to do. Conservatives are not going to be able to move this nation toward building according to our blueprints without doing a better job with blacks and Latinos. And when Ronald Reagan was elected, 88% electric was white. In 2008, 74% electric was white. And in 2012, Barack Obama was reelected to the presidency with only 39% of the white vote. And 33% of whites are already liberals. If you think they're going to jump over to us because, you know, we think that white people should vote for us so that hopefully if all the minorities come out, you think our good strategy is crossing your fingers and closing your eyes and hoping that certain people groups who are trained and told from birth that because of their history, they better go to the polls? Black, black folks are not only registered at higher percentages than the national average, but they show up more. That last, and not just because it's a black, they don't vote for any liberal. Because we haven't done our job to go in there and tell them these Democrats are not doing you a service. Here's what they believe and here's what we believe. But the hope they don't come out is, is, is contradicting the very thing that they're being taught. It, this is in black culture to register. 
I don't care how broken the family is. At 18, you go vote. You go register. And you just vote like mama register. And our strategy as a party has always been, what is wrong with you, fool, voting for them Democrats? You just call their mama a fool. And you just call their grandma a fool because they vote Democrat because their mama voted Democrat. They, and their mama votes Democrat because her mama voted Democrat. And her mama votes Democrat because King was called in jail. Because prior to King getting that phone call in jail from that Democrat, black folks weren't voting for Democrats. In fact, more people voted for, uh, for Richard Nixon when he first ran than voted for Kennedy when he first ran. No, black folks were Republicans. In fact, Frederick Douglass, one of our heroes, said, I'm a dire Republican because they're a party of freedom and progress. And as the people have over time kept convincing us that Republicans are a party of rich people, I've been telling all my black friends, I said, well, now, I've been a poor people party. If it's a party of rich people, it seems like you'd want to go to their party. They're going to serve fine or wine for sure. Uh, and who wants to hang around poor people? Without black and Hispanics to understand American exceptionalism, it's going to get harder for us to elect conservatives. And without black and Hispanics, it will be hard for conservatives that do get elected to get the job done. And what's ironic is the reforms that we talk about, they need them most. They need their children out of these broken government schools. They need to be able to build wealth and transfer it through individual accounts. And they need a healthcare system that's available for them and their needs that only the market can deliver. So right now, they only hear from liberals. They hear from these unprincipled corporations funding them. They hear for, from these left-wing foundations that have millions and um, millions of dollars that they pump into these communities. These children are indoctrinated in these schools, and their adults only get their news from CNN, ABC, NBC, and some of these jokesters on at night. All liberal controlled media outlets. That's why I'm building a network of urban churches to get them to get schools and fight for vouchers. That's why we're doing our full service marketing and media campaign. Americans who care about the future of this country, we are losing this nation. If nothing is more clear in that last election, we have to know we are losing. But if we want to win. If we want better for our children, our grandchildren, we're going to have to start making the investments that it takes to get the truth about freedom into these minority communities. The work is not settled. That's why I was glad to see uh, Tiffany here today, who's been rehired over at the RNC. It's not going to be simple. The work has to be done, though, if we're going to save America. And with your help, we can get it done. And I just appreciate this opportunity to share this with you. Thank you. Rock TV.